What's up everyone? In this video, we're going to go over how to render payload CMS rich text content on a Next.js front end. Before we get started though, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and getting notifications so you never miss when I release a video about payload CMS, Next.js, and more. If you'd like the code that I'm going to use in this video, there's a link to the repo in the description. Now, let's dive in. In the last video, we used Lexical's HTML converter feature to dangerously set our content divs inner HTML, which was helpful in getting the example done. The HTML converter feature is also helpful for front ends that don't use React, but now we're going to go over how to get the full value out of our Lexical rich text editor in Next.js. First, we're going to create a new directory in our source folder called components. In that directory, we'll create another new directory and call that one rich text. And in here, we can create a new file that we're going to call index.tsx. And here's where we're going to build our rich text renderer. Payload comes with a stock rich text converter that you can import from Payload CMS. So we'll do that by doing import rich text as rich text converter from payload CMS rich text lexical react. The reason we're calling rich text something else is because we'll be naming our function rich text. So we don't want to have any collisions in our names, which is why we're using rich text converter here. So now we're going to create that function called rich text. So we can do that by exporting a new function called rich text. And we'll need props for this function. So we'll come above it and we'll set a new type called props and open up an empty object there. We'll set props to include data, which will be a serialized editor state, which you'll need to import not from lexical, but from payload CMS, rich text lexical slash lexical. After that, you'll come down and use the ampersand and also use react types for HTML attributes for the HTML div element. You can then assign these props to your props in your rich text function. So we're going to do props and we can set props to that. In the function, you'll deconstruct the props as const class name and rest. Rest is just a way to include the rest of the props without typing them all out individually. Now you can return your rich text converter with the rest props as well as your class name and then come over to your content with media component and import rich text from our components folder. Now we can replace our content HTML sections with our rich text, which will have a data props and we can do block dot content and we can do a conditional check just the same way to make sure that we only render this field if there is indeed content. We can then copy and paste this down to the other field and our rich text renderer is done. Now that that's in there, we don't need our lexical HTML field anymore so we can get rid of all of the stuff that we used for our rich text editor. We'll then generate types since we got rid of a type and then we'll do pmpm dev. And once you load up your local host, you'll see that nothing has changed. We can then go to our admin UI, go to our blog posts, to the blog that we're rendering currently, and switch the text position. And just like it did with the lexical HTML field, it flips this perfectly. Since our rich text field came directly from the lexical field for this block, you'll notice that not much has changed. But now we can come in here and we can set some formatting and then we'll see that the formatting just applies just like it would if it was set as an HTML field. But now if we go down to our content field here where we have just a lexical rich text field and put in some content with some formatting. Now that we have content in a lexical rich text field, we can now add our rich text converter here on the front end as well. So underneath our render blocks, we'll do rich text and we'll import it from our components folder. Use post.content and then make sure that this only renders when we do have post.content. 
And now when I save this, we see down here at the bottom, we have this as a lexical rich text field. But we set up our render blocks. So what if we wanted to add a block to our field here? And we'll add an image and a text position. If we save this, we'll notice that nothing changes. We get an error and that's about it. So what we need to do is set up our rich text field to accept blocks. And so we'll come over back to our rich text converter in order to do that. Now this next step is optional, but I'm gonna come into our rich text directory and add a new directory called converters. And in here, we're going to have a TypeScript file that's going to be index. And this is where our primary converter is going to be. So to kick this off, we're gonna create a new const called JSX converter. Set that equal to the default converters and have this with an arrow function assigned to a set of open parentheses and curly braces. In here, we're going to pass in our default converters and we'll need to address some types in order for this to get working properly. So first, let's import the types that we want from payload types. So we know we want our table of contents and we're going to set this as table of contents props. And we also want our content with media and we'll do as content with media props there as well. Now we can create a new type called node types. Set it equal to the default node types as well as our serialized block node. And we're going to add some angled brackets and put in our types that we imported here just a minute ago. So we'll do table of content props and content with media props. So be sure that you are importing each of these types as we go. So you can see that default note types and serialized block node come from payload CMS rich text lexical. We can then assign the type JSX converters function with node types to our JSX converter and now we can move forward. After our spread operator with default converters, we can pass in the blocks prop and then open an empty object and pass in the blocks we'd like to use in our converter. Your IDE should provide type hints as you go. So for us, we know that we have content with media and we also have our table of contents. And then here we can pass in a node with an arrow function to now render our content with media block. So we're going to make sure that we import content with media from our blocks component folder there. And we can then use the spread operator with node fields and close this up correctly. And that's all set. And now we can do node and do our table of contents from our table of contents component file, do node.fields and this looks all good. Once you get everything in there that you want to use, you can then export this const, come over to your rich text index, and we're gonna pass in, in the converters prop, our JSX converter. And again, this imports automatically for me from our converters directory. And so here you do see that we get a type error for this. And so for now though, we can just do a TypeScript ignore because if we come over to our front end, we do see that we have this as some content and the block is showing up just like we have right here. And now I can switch this to be text position right, refresh, and the block updates just as it would if it was an individual block like this one here. Now, the reason I created a converters directory is you are able to use custom ways to render specific elements. So for example, if you want to use internal linking, you actually need to inform your link to know what collection you're linking to. We'll go over that in just a second. You could also add in IDs or class names to headers and more. Let's start with the internal links since that's a required converter to use if you're using links within your rich text field. So now we're going to create a new TSX file that we'll call internal link. We're going to create a new const called internal doc to href. And at the time of this recording, this is the required name of this converter. We're going to come back and hit export on that. And we're going to set it equal to link node. 
and assign the type to link node to be serialized link node. And we're going to import this from rich text lexical. We can then assign an arrow function and open up the function there. We're going to deconstruct our link node dot fields dot doc to a const with value and relation to, and that's what that will look like. The exclamation point is necessary to ensure you receive a non-null value in return. Then we're gonna define a new const called slug and set that equal to be a type of value does not equal string and value.slug. So this is ensuring that we are getting a slug in return that we can then use in our upcoming function. We know we have options to link to our users or post collections. So we'll do if relation to is equal to posts, we then want to return the link to be posts slug. Else if relation to is equal to our users collection, we then want to return users slash slug. Else, so if it doesn't match any of those conditions, we can return just the slug itself. You'll then need to add this to your JSX converters const by adding the link JSX converter with a spread operator. So let's go back to our converters index and we'll do link JSX converter. And we need to open this up with an object and import in our internal doc to href. This should allow you to effortlessly link between collections in your rich text field. So now here I can add a link and have this be an internal link that links to this user. If I hit save changes and save, scroll down to the link, very small, we can see that this now links to users slash Nick. The other example is in assigning an ID to an element. We'll do this based on the text of a header. So we'll create a new file that we'll call heading converter. And then we're going to export a new const called heading converter and assign JSX converters serialized heading node from rich text lexical. And then we're going to set that equal to a set of curly braces and pass in the heading option. This is going to accept node and nodes to JSX and we'll assign it to another arrow function that will expect an expression. We can get the text of the tags by setting const text to be equal to nodes to JSX, then nodes node dot children dot join with a set of quotation marks there. Next, we'll check if the nodes tag is h2. So we can do if node dot tag is equal to h2. We can then open up that expression. If it is, we'll add a new const called id and we'll set it to a hyphenated version of its text by using this code here. And what this does is it takes the text, sets it to lowercase, replaces all spaces and places a hyphen in its place and it replaces anything else that is not a text or number and it replaces it with a blank space. So that gets rid of all punctuation except for hyphens as well. We can then return the h2 with an id of the const id and then our text in there. Now, if we leave it like this, it's not going to return anything else for any of our other heading tags. So we're going to use an else statement to catch those. So we'll do const tag equals node dot tag. And here you can see in my IDE, I get these type hints here where it can be any of these heading tags, but it can't be h2 because that's caught up here in the if statement. We'll then return our tag with no ID and set the text in the middle to be just like that. Now we've already exported this. We can come over to our converters, add in a spread operator for our heading converter. Make sure that imports properly from our converters directory. And when we hit save and we add 
an H2 to our lexical rich text editor, and then refresh our homepage, and we can see this is an H2 show up with the ID there as this is an H2. What you can do with the rich text field and converters is endless, but now you have a great starting point to build your own uses for the lexical editor in your project's front end. If this video was helpful, please like the content and share it with others who may find it useful as well. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel and getting notifications so you never miss an update about Payload CMS, Next.js, and more. Leave suggestions and questions in the comments. I'm happy to help. I'll see you on the next one.